permission is sought for the demolition of the existing church hall <coughs> and an adjacent property known as Holy, which is currently used in connection with church activities. The existing car park will be extended and a new church hall and meeting space will be constructed. The new building will be two-storey, with the first floor accommodated within the roof space. Its design and appearance is articulated to give depth and reflect features of existing buildings on the site. The new building has been set back slightly from the line of the existing buildings, maintaining views of the church along Church Road. A request to list Homely has been turned down by English Heritage due to the fact that the building is a fairly standard example of many built during the period and it has no particular architectural quality or merit that would warrant it being listed. Although the main church building is listed, the buildings proposed for demolition are not. Their age, accessibility and limited room size limits their usefulness and the new buildings would result in a fit for purpose, accessible and more energy efficient solution. The new building has been designed to complement the setting of the adjacent listed church with materials proposed that give character and interest within the street scene. Objections have been raised around parking and that by allowing this development would exacerbate existing problems. The site is already used for activities associated with the church and its ancillary activities. The existing car park will be extended to provide for a small number of additional spaces. Conditions are also proposed which secure arrangements not presently in place around the management of the site, including parking and other modes of transport, together with additional restrictions at nearby junctions. The proposals are considered to result in a church and community facility which reflects the setting of the listed church and the street scene. The proposals are recommended for approval. There is a qualifying petition of objection together with a qualifying petition of support. Uh, and just to um, uh, let members know that additional signatures of the petition of objection have been received uh, in, the last, in, the last, in the last couple of days, taking the total number up to 235. Thank you, Matthew. Um, as we do have a qualifying petition on this one, first of all, I'd like to call <coughs> um, the petitioner against the application. If they'd like to come forward, please. If you, if you look at your uh, microphone, there's a silver button, just press that. This one here? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> As you sit down, pull the mic towards you, if you would, unless you're going to stand. No, no, no. You'd be more comfortable sitting with things. If you could just pull the mic towards you so that everybody can yeah. hear you. Uh, if you just state your name and your address, and you have up to five minutes to speak. My name is Andrew Nicholson, and I will be on. Sorry, you just turn the microphone off. Just turn it back on. Please don't. Ah, please don't. Don't keep pressing it. Got you. Thanks. My name is Andrew Nicholson. I live in Heath Drive, just down the road from Church Road. Any development at St Mary's needs to be responsible, sustainable, and sensitive to the needs of the community. Let's start with heritage and community. Many local people care deeply about home and need. This Victorian building with its charm, its history, and its contribution to the setting. But St. Mary's, say homely, is no longer fit for purpose and must be demolished. Damp, dry rot, bomb damage, I kid you not, and a general state of dilapidation. No, not homely, but my house last year, which is now very much fit for purpose. And if I can do this with a fraction of the budget, so can St. Mary's. And as positive local opinion is wholly against redevelopment. A better and more sympathetic design would be welcomed by many people. There's middle ground to be found here. Indeed, the vicar himself has said this is more about people than bricks. Then please, don't let this be more about bricks than people, as hundreds of people in the local community will be hugely and permanently affected by these proposals. The church has only ever presented one plan to the community, and to my mind, this is not a consultation, this is a statement of intent. The planning committee is obliged under the NPPF to listen to expert advice. The Victorian Society strongly objects to the demolition of Homely. 
They also strongly object to the scale and desire of a proposed replacement, saying it is entirely inappropriate in this highly sensitive location. Clear, expert advice, please. Take a look. Let's look at parking. And a little known fact, currently St. Mary's has 48 parking spaces, including the tenant front of Home Lee and the Church Hall, most of which will be lost. The proposal has only 46 spaces. Now, under the council's own parking guidance, SPD4, which we have here, churches should have up to one off-road parking space per four square meters of function space. This is one of the busiest churches in Wirral with 510 square meters of function space. So St. Mary should already have 128 spaces. So with only a third of the required parking, which is already causing problems with parking saturation, obstruction, including for emergency vehicles, blocked pavements, forcing passing traffic to mount pavements, and countless near misses. This is a daily reality throughout each week, not just on Sundays. And it will get even busier. They say in their own brochure, in their own brochure, that they want to use the proposal complex for things like exhibitions, 24-7 prayer events, and conferences. St. Mary's will soon take out all the church pews to create additional function space for these added events. So the proposed development would shoot up to 896 square meters a 76% increase requiring 224 parking spaces. With only a fifth of that, it's unsustainable, surely. The MPPF requires a consideration of strategic issues, including the additional future strain from other sources. The new homes being built next to Upton Bypass, 155 of them will impact on parking in Church Road. There'll also be increased housing density when the Church Road BT site is redeveloped for housing significant strategic reason to reject this application. To summarise, we believe the proposal fails every applicable element of local and national planning policy. Using your own guidelines, we've listed some of the shortcomings, so pens up for ready, here are the bullets. Within MPPF paragraph 17, they fail all 10 of the relevant core planning principles. Can I just tell you you've got one minute left? Absolutely. Thank you. In addition, the proposal fails at paragraph 7 for sustainability, 14 for adverse impact, 65 for design, 128, 129 for heritage, <coughs> paragraph 162 for strategic infrastructure, and 118 for protected beach tree. They fail rural councils' unitary development plan on scale parking and change to harm to protected tree. They fail massively to meet rural councils' own parking guidelines. We simply ask the council to apply their own guidance, reject this proposal as it stands, to provide the opportunity for the church to reconsider, reconfigure, and heal the divide with the hundreds of local people in the community. After all, people are more important than the buildings. Thank you.
And it's that phrase, fit for purpose, that's been picked up that uh, summarizes what we're doing. It's very clear that the church, this is an opportune time, really, for the church to do something with its buildings to bring it up to date into this century and of use. And evidence of this, the church membership, 75% of them live within a two mile radius of the church, uh, have pledged 1.4 million pounds to this project out of their own family household budget. And they see that as an investment in people, as has been mentioned, in big society. This is the voluntary sector at work in the best of ways. For the building itself, it's been mentioned already, 35% of the uh, new build is simply circulation space, which is non-existent at the moment. Uh, we've decreased the office space and increased the efficiency, and there are better equipped rooms. There's one more than there is at the moment in terms of meeting spaces, uh, and it will be up to date, proper design, modern characteristics. We've looked at the fit for purpose questions, and there are not significant increases in the operating capacity that will bring in more traffic. That the seating capacity of the church itself is being reduced with what's happening inside. All of our original designs were looked at by the officers with suggestions and are compliant with the national planning policy framework in opposition to what's just been said. We obviously have a different view, but it's been clearly supported and evidenced in the report of your chief planning officer. The loss of home belief is a planning issue, but he concludes, or well, the uh, report concludes, that the loss of this unlisted building is outweighed by the advantages which result from a new building. English Heritage have rejected the request to, for it to be listed, as has been mentioned. We contacted the Victorian Society several times, they never got back to us, they've not replied to the diocese either. On the issue of traffic, top of extra parking that has been provided. The planning officer's report offers suggestions of traffic mitigation and the traffic and transport department have no objections to it subject to the conditions. On top of that, since the planning has been submitted, we've been working on a drive sharing scheme for 25 cars on a Sunday and another 10 parking elsewhere away from the junctions that has been offered to us as 35 spaces off site. We offer our car park free to Optum Village and to use shopkeepers and shoppers often say thank you to us. Local residents sometimes park their cars in our car park overnight as well. I'm a local resident myself, but just down the road, I use the church regularly. And on a personal note, I find that patience is adequate at times when the parking is at its busiest. We have engaged in a huge amount of community communications concerning the proposals. We've delivered newsletters referencing the plans to 3,000 homes four times in the last 18 months, delivered letters, more detailed letters to 250 homes near the church twice, and all six letters have regularly said to people, I'm happy personally to meet with anyone and everyone face to face to talk more about it. Can I just tell you how long did that? We've held several open community meetings and we're convinced that the many groups that we represent, not just the church members in and around, would be enriched through these new buildings. I take encouragement from the recommendation of your chief planning officer, who's weighed up all the conflicting evidence and recommended an approval of the proposed building. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you for the time.